a couple of qualifications on the um, um, presentation. I think, like uh, Dr. Hove said yesterday, uh, they are focusing on food. We are focusing on uh, the water business, and it's uh, for everyone. And uh, we are aware that we are talking about the water and energy nexus uh, in this uh, particular presentation. But when, in terms of what we do, we look at uh, the um, uh, supply of water for uh, everyone in the country. So, of course, our focus here will be on energy and food, but I think we'll also touch on a couple of other, um, other areas. The outline of the presentation is what we have got there. Uh, essentially, is to say what do we do uh, in, in, in the Department of Water and Sanitation in terms of water resource planning? Um, in, uh, how do we do it? And then, of course, how do we address the uh, water and energy? And, uh, and we've got a few uh, conclusions and recommendations uh, in that uh, respect. Um, I will pass over some of the slides uh, because some of the stuff has been dealt with yesterday. But uh, I will also dwell on a couple of other areas as we, as we go along. Um, I would like, just as a start for us, and I always like to bring this uh, out, um, just to give the context uh, of where we are in South Africa. And the key message is that uh, we have got here is that in terms of demographics, um, we are, there's high inequality in the country. And uh, we also are aware that water is a vehicle for development. Um, the major issue that we are looking at is if you look at the 2011 census, um, in terms of population, we have you know, moved up from 51 million, hopefully, uh, to 57 million. And uh, the interesting number that I want to uh, show there is the issue around the Gini coefficient, very, very high inequality. And that's uh, something that I think that we need to think about uh, as, we, as, we, as, we, as, we, as we as we move along and do our work. And also it's very critical for us to be aware of our demographics. And you can see our pyramid here. <coughs> the numbers are quite uh, you know, large at the bottom. Uh, some of us are sitting up here. I will not mention my age. I do dye my hair, so. <laughs> um, so in terms of that, what we pick up is that inequality, we also have unemployment, we also have the issues of poverty. And if you look at our BRICS uh, countries that we, that we associate with and compare, and you also look at some of those countries that we are you know, looking at, uh, so you can see that we have, you know, one of the highest in terms of inequality. And that's one of the things that we must be addressing. And I think as we come into this energy, food and water nexus, that is the, one of the issues that we really must be talking to and uh, focusing upon. And in that respect, you will find, this is from our National Water Resource uh, Strategy. We do try to talk to those uh, kinds of things, uh, you know, uh, in terms of water being uh, a vehicle for, uh, you know, development, elimination of poverty and uh, inequality, and of course, contributing to job creation. So there's that responsiveness that, that is in there. And from our strategy, one of the things that we have been doing now is to go to a master plan. And this is one of the uh, first things since 1994 when we came in, in 1998 when we had our new National Water Act that we have translated the strategy into a plan or operational plan that we are now using uh, for uh, implementing our activities. And you see here, um, we recognize the drivers there, the SDGs, our NDP, you know, the legislation, climate change issues as drivers. Critically for us, there are in a number of enablers in, in this respect. Uh, you know, governance issues, we are constrained by finance, uh, you know, the communication, uh, a major, major problem, skills and capacity building. Um, you will find that in, in our planning section, we've been trying to do recruitment for quite a number of uh, years and we've been struggling quite a lot because when it comes to that side of this picture, you find out that uh, the, you know, it's not a very sexy area for young guys. Uh, it's for the gray-haired uh, uh, people. Uh, 
But what we are looking at, what I'm going to be talking about mainly is around the water resources. Of course, we looking at water supply, water quality, protection, sanitation, but uh, mainly uh, I'll focus on this particular area. And then, of course, this is leading us to the, those particular areas. And of course, our goal is for affordable and reliable access to sufficient and safe uh, water and hygienic sanitation for socio-economic well-being. So that's where we are looking at as we move forward uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, us working as a, as a, as a department. And uh, in regard to you know, the why and our approach of how we do, the key message we have got is that we as a country, South Africa, we are a water scarce country. And one of the options then that comes is that we must explore other sources of water. Um, you know, for further development and uh, to supplement what we have got. And I raised seven uh, points on, in this regard um, in terms of the characteristics of our water resources. Uh, the one is water scarcity. The other one is the temporal nature of the spatial distribution, international, uh, you know, shared water, pollution, uh, regulated water resources and the competition among users and the transition uh, that we are seeing. In the discussion yesterday, I think we also picked up around the issues around dams and so on. And uh, I think it's Dr. Mwendera who mentioned uh, the issue that uh, we keep on changing. We are in a dynamic environment. And um, to that end, in terms of our water sector, we also have to look at and see and say where are we and one of the things that we are recognizing is that we are in a transition from a development phase to a mature phase in terms of our water resources and we'll look at that um, you know in a short while um i always sort of bring up this slide when i talk and it's a bit unfair when you compare it but you know this is huge uh, if you look at the area of the congo but you're looking at you know trillions in terms of uh um, the water resources in that in that area now you know niger river zambia there we are looking at about uh, I, I can't even uh, look in on that how to pronounce that number let alone that particular one but interestingly for south africa we are on that number there 50 you know billion cubic meters in terms of our annual runoff now if you compare that and our biggest river look at that number there teeny weeny little number in comparison to what we see in other countries. As I've said, it's a bit unfair, an unfair comparison when you look at the sort of uh, area uh, that, that we have got. But it just gives us a sense of where we are in terms of water scarcity. And uh, uh, this gives credence, I think, when we talk about power imports, uh, uh, when we're uh, talking about the Inga Dam project, so we're going to be importing power. And in the IRP uh, 2018, I think there's a target of about 2,500 megawatts that's going to be, that we potentially could be importing from that area. So that gives credence to that particular area there that we are talking about. So we are a water scarce country and uh, there's no running away from that. And in terms of our planning, that is one of the things that we, should, that we look up at. at. And of course, uh, the spread of that water, you can see the rainfall distribution, um, our you know, sort of uh, high rainfall, low rainfall, high evaporation in this particular area, so, you know, slightly lower evaporation uh, in this particular area. And again, uh, I think uh, it was uh, Dr. Hoey again yesterday, he gave this uh, uh, slide. Uh, there's, uh, you know, our mean annual precipitation 465, versus world average of 860. And if you look at uh, where we are, where we are going to be, uh, we are going to see uh, you know, more water stress in the country as we go along. Um, I've alluded to these numbers. Um, one of the th uh, key issues from the work that uh, Bill Pittman and others did for over many years since the 1950s you're looking at about you know, 40, 49 billion in terms of our annual runoff. And uh, the reliable yield for that, you know, 27%.
potential remaining development, we are looking at about 5.4. And then uh, we have some reuse that we are looking at. We are going to be launching a study to confirm some of these numbers. Uh, this is for surface water. You can apply the same argument and look at it in terms of our groundwater. Um, there is a, a bit of a gap there. You're looking at about uh, potentially we could get an additional four billion. So the focus at the moment is that four billion uh, that we are, you know, uh, trying to to work around. Um, so that is the situation. The uh, just a repetition here. You see, a world um, a fund, worldwide fund. We've done some. They've done some work with us and also Water Research Commission identifying the key water source areas for the country and of course the uh, distribution in space and in time so we have around this area here uh, your wet season uh, being you know from about September October up to January February March and then in the Western Cape area we've got that particular distribution so we have that uh, you know uh, issue the implication for this is that um, we have to store water, that's one. We also have to transfer some of that water to the areas that where it is needed. And I think this is one of the caveats that we need to talk about uh, in respect of energy and in respect of uh, uh, food production. Uh, what tends to happen is that the food production, uh, we see that the land and the soils and the climate are there where they are and you can't transfer you know to, to take to another place similarly for power generation uh, if you look at for instance coal uh, the coal is there in the ground and uh, you you have to dig it out and t and uh, and then carry it to the to the to the power station so when you want to get uh, the generation you actually have to be bringing in the water from somewhere and that is uh, part of that is what is reflected in what we have got here and um, I mean, just you know, a, a sort of a, a more colourful representation. I, I got this from Felix Reinders at ARC, uh, just to indicate that uh, you know variation in terms of our rainfall. And you can see the red areas. You can also see you know when uh, it rains in different parts of the country. Okay. Um, the other issue I think that uh, we look at is that our water we are is internationally shared with other countries, so we have a, quite a, a number of agreements that we have got, um, and we talk to the SADA protocol on shared water courses. Um, the intention at the moment we have some transfers from Lesotho here. Uh, we have some discussions that are going on for transfer around the Musina SEZ to transfer water from Zimbabwe. Potentially we also Mozambique, uh, we could you know, bring some water there, but that's not in the uh, short term at the moment. And also from up here, we've been looking at the Congo, Zambezi um, as uh, transfer uh, sources. We do transfer some water out into uh, Swaziland. Um, a part, part of the agreement, if you look at the Pongola Port Dam or Josini Dam, um, because part of that uh, dam flooded an uh, area in Swaziland. So, but what is critical is that um, we are sharing the resources with uh, other countries and the management thereof must also recognize that and that is one of the characteristics of our water resources. The pollution issue, I think, is very critical for us to recognize that and in terms of our nexus, the uh, agriculture has been recognized as a diffuse uh, source of pollution uh, for the water resource and uh, in terms of uh, the valve, we have a, a few uh, issues there and we have to release a lot of water from Lesotho to actually uh, work towards uh, dilution uh, of, that, uh, of that water um, to uh, you know, assist in, in terms of the water quality. Um, we were in a meeting a couple of uh, uh, weeks ago and one of the NGO representatives uh, came out to us and said, uh, I just have to think about, uh, dilution is not a solution to pollution. <laughs> <laughs> that was the, <laughs> the message to us. I think it's a, it's a key message. Why? Because uh, 
we are transferring water from uh, Lesotho, for instance, quite a lot of water, and then you end up using that water to dilute some of the water in the farm. Um, so yeah, pollution is part of that. We also have, as a characteristics in South Africa, um, it's, I think one of the most uh, advanced in terms of uh, water infrastructure. Uh, you're looking at about over 4,000 registered dams, of which 794 are considered large dams, and uh, you know large storage capacity. And, and I think uh, is it uh, Professor Templehof you mentioned yesterday the history of part of that development, and it's quite interesting uh, uh, in that in that area. Um, so when you look at that, we've got a number of, uh, I just put a few of those uh, dams just to, to, to indicate some of those, uh, uh, you know, sizes. Um, you know, your Fal, your, your Josini, which was Pongola Port, Van de Kloof, uh, you know, Harib, and uh, all that. So those are some of the infrastructure that we have. Again, this is another slide, I think, that uh, Dr. Mwendira raised yesterday in terms of the distribution of uh, uh, the water use. And agriculture it takes quite a large together with afforestation. And of course, uh, power generation, uh, this side, together with industry. Uh, and when we look at our nexus, so if we then look at that area, in that area, it, we are you know, consuming a fairly large chunk of the water that we are using uh, in, the, in, the, in the country. We are going to be launching a study to relook at these figures. They don't change a lot, but I think it's part of the work that we will be doing. But we are going to be relooking at, at some of those uh, figures uh, in future to see how they are, you know, uh, uh, looking at. The last point which I raise is this issue that we are in a transitional phase uh, from a development to a mature phase. And this is a work, I, I, I forget the author of that seminal paper in Australia, who has done that analytical framework. Uh, in, in terms of long run supply of impounded water, in, if you're in an expansionary phase, then you're in a, it's elastic. You've got many sites for that. When you're in a mature phase, it's fairly inelastic. So we don't have so many sites. The other issue that we see is that uh, the demand for water, uh, for delivered water, will be low but growing, uh, elastic at low prices, and vice versa when you come to the mature phase. The physical condition of Im impoundment and delivery systems, here you'll find it is fairly new and in good condition. Here it is now a aging and expensive to, uh, becomes expensive to repair. So when you look at for instance, our master plan is we, uh, we are uh, working on it at the moment. This is one of the things that we have recognized that we are in that particular phase and we now need to start looking at, uh, uh, you know, uh, doing a fairly ex extensive amount of retrofitting expense, I mean, repair, renovation, and so on. Critically, this is where we are. We are having now a fair amount of uh, intense competition across water use sectors. So where you were having, uh, you know, the resource being available, now in terms of the allocations, possibly you may have to transfer the water across the sectors. And where that comes in is that uh, you are going to have a lot of discussions, you are going to have a lot of, lot of talks, you are going to have a lot of dialogue in, 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 in that respect. And uh, when we were presenting the master plan, uh, and I remember we're in Northern Cape, and we mentioned this issue in terms of our outlook to say uh, agriculture uses a lot of water. Uh, you know, there was a lot of uh, uh, discomfort with that particular statement. And uh, uh, I had to come out and say, you were going to read out my biography. So I likely, I come from an agricultural engineering background and in agriculture. So I had to say, no, I'm actually one of you. Uh, <laughs> don't, uh, uh, you know, uh, think I'm attacking you. I actually, um, uh, you know, talk and uh, speak your language more than I speak the water uh, language because I've come from an agriculture background. So that sort of diffused part of that uh, tension, but it's an important issue. 
Um, so social cost of sub subsidizing water fairly high and rising uh, in the mature phase. So in terms of the work that we are doing, we have to recognize this transition that we have got at the moment. And it if affects the policy decisions, it affects the strategies on how we deal with the, uh, the water sector. So the policy responses to that, we have to generate revenues to finance new developments. And this is a fairly, not controversial, but it's something that in South Africa we have to recognize. We were indicating in the master plan that there's a 33 billion funding shortfall in terms of uh, our, our you know, investment uh, per annum, that is. So unless we look at funding that infrastructure, it may be a little bit difficult uh, to, to look at that. We look at dampening growth in the quantity of water demanded, so water conservation and demand management becomes very important. And then reallocation of water uh, becomes an important, an important area. And of course, resilient conflict resolution mechanisms become very important uh, in, that, in that regard. So, if you look at each one of those areas, you could actually say, do a mapping and say for water scarcity, you can respond by, at the moment we look at expanding the water mix, storing of, uh, you know, un uh, water underground, accessing other aquifers, reuse, desalination. You're looking at, uh, you know, storage of water to address the uneven and special distribution and so on. Important for us, international water, we need to do proper regulation and uh, discussions with other countries. Um, balancing facilities for weather extremes, water quality deterioration, we have to proper, have proper regulation mechanisms and so on. Condition of infrastructure, revenue collection, innov innovative uh, funding models and so on. One of the critical issues is around governance in terms of strengthening policy, legal and institutional ar arrangements. Uh, we need to have a look at that and uh, have a discussion around, around those things. So that is the characteristic of our water situation. Just for information, I think, uh, in terms of our governance, we've got three tiers, you know, the national, provincial, uh, or catchment, and then uh, ultimately at the local level where we are having the um, water users associations and water services authorities and so on. Um, we were working around initially 19, it came down to nine, at a point we were talking about one uh, catchment management agency, now we are back to nine and so on. But that's the, 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 the governance issue.